Hello guys, my name is Tim Damon Andrew and I'm a data analyst for UBZ. For today's session, I'll be showing you how to create a calendar table in Power BI using Python. So, you know, for that, let's just start. So, first thing, I have to import some necessary libraries. So, I'll say import some necessary libraries. Right, so, the first thing I need, I need, I need Pandas. So, import Pandas as Pandas is for data manipulation. Also, I need time from date time import sorry import dates right okay so I'll run this cool so when you're creating a calendar table it has two things right so when you're creating a calendar it has two things that's the start date and it also has the word end date so I'll say my start date start date let's make start date first of January 2020 I can say my end date on my end date to be today. So end date. My end date today, right? So date, date today. So what this basically means it gives me today's date. This gives me today's date. Today's date. So if, if you're used to programming a lot, so there are some things like there are some things like when you're creating a calendar, you have a start date. Start date. Start date means when the date actually starts. So that's when you start. When the calendar starts. Calendar starts, right? The end date. Now the end date is usually important because of the end date is like when calendar ends. So if you're if you're in an organization that the date keeps increasing day by day, so most times we use something called today. So what else today gives you? Today basically gives you today's date, right? We also have another function called now. So what now does it? Now gives you both gives you both date and time. So it gives you both date and time. So it's usually going to be in um this format like when you write your date, like something like one comma one comma twenty twenty two. Space you have H H H H stands for hour, minutes, and seconds. So something like this is what you get most of the time, right? So this gives you like more flexibility. So let's go back to our Python and let's do it together. So I'll escape this. So I have my start date, I also have my end date. So I have to create a data frame between the two dates, right? So I'll say dates, date table. You know my date table equals to P D dot data frame, right? Data my bracket i'll say my pd also pd dot date range date range open my bracket so if you want to know what would be inside your date range you can just press shift tab this will pop out right so let me just do some basic investigation now i can see that for my date range i need to have my start date i need to have my end date you can see it over here right because these are the things you need inside of your date range i need my start date which is compulsory I need my end date, I need my period, I need my frequency, I need my time zone. So these are basically five major things you need over here, right? So the next thing I will do now is I will escape this and just okay. I already have my start date, which I've done here. So I'll copy this, paste it over here. Come on. End date, which is my end date. My end date means today. That's today's date, right? Paste this over here, followed by what? Frequency. So frequency is how many times you want to be appearing. So that FRQ, FRQ equals to that's it out by hourly breeze, right? So I'll put H. So H stands for hour. Comma. TZ is time zone, which equals to let me quote you. I don't know. Should I use GMT or UTC? I think I don't know if it's UTC because UTC is like African. It's universal time zone. So UTC, right? Then you come. You leave the bracket comma. Okay, sorry. Bracket comma, then I put columns right. Columns, so the column name should be what? And the column name should be date, right? And that's all. And I can run this. Okay, no error. So let's just check if it's working perfectly. And run this. Okay, now you can see now I have the date in different hours because I need frequency in hours. You can see that you show me hours here, right? One hour, two hour, three hours. So the next thing I want to do now to so like this is just when you have a calendar table, you still have your you have your 
year, you're definitely going to have your what month, monthly, and some other variables. So let's just add some other variables to this now. I'll say date table. Date table. Oh. table so date table right square bracket i want to add the year this time around so i'm creating a variable for date for year equals to so i say date on the table again date table of what date of date but dt so this is stands for date and time dt dot year so what this basically means i'm getting the year from the date table so i'm using getting this right i'm getting this with reference to what i created here so i'm trying what i'm trying to do basically i'm pulling out only the year from this calendar table to make a new column called what dates to sorry to make a new column called what year that's what it basically means right so if i run this let's check first this awesome so let's get another so let's say i get the month right so let me just copy all of this you don't know where it is i'll copy all of this it down here, right? So I'll get the months this time around. So months, months of the year. Where it is, I'll put months here. Also. Right? Let's I'll get another thing again. Let me get the month name. Yeah. So I'll get the month name. So months underscore name, right? Month name. So for this now, we have to this, this is gonna be a little bit tricky, but this now has to do with the text, right? So I'll just move it to I'll say S T R F. SRF of time, open my bracket, double quotes, I put percentage, percentage sign on B, right? So I run this, I run this, you see. So the month name came out. Okay, so you may ask yourself now, how did I come about this? How was I able to do something like this, right? So I'll go to the Python um, documentation of Pandas. So I'll just come over here. So you can see this is the documentation. So basically, this is going to give you like a better understanding how to create a date, a month name. Day, um, day name, Q, class quarter year, like it gives you like basically so many things you can do with it. So this is basically how you can create. So it's just more like a guide. So this is Pandas documentation of creating date time in date time in Python. So let me go back to our code again. So I have this right. Let's have to get another thing like um quarter, right? Let me get the quarter now. So the quarter will be more quarter that's quarter. Let me get another thing like days of the week. So days of the week, right? So days of week. I get the days of the week. Um, come down here, so I'll see. Day of week. Space again. You can also get hour. That's one cool thing. Let me see. Let's try. So I'll get hourly rates. Let's put hour over here. Very easy. And lastly, let's get the week name. So I need a week name. Week name. Week name of the date. So it be. I also use that same function as SRF. SRF of time. Open bracket. Double code. Percentage sign up. A. Right. So let's run this. Let's run this again. Voila. That's how easy this is, right? So I can I've got all the calendar that I need. So now I've done this in Python. So the next thing is to do it in Power BI. So you can see all the things I need, right? I have my date table, I have my year, I have my month number, I have my month name, I have my quarter, I have my my days of the week, I have my hour, I have my I have my uh, what do you call it now? My week name also. And the cool thing about this, you can see shame quarter three because right now we're in July. 2022 so well, today's date is basically today's date is actually 14th of july 2022 so we're in the first quarter already awesome so the next thing now is for this frequency over here right I can, if i change it to d d basically gives me time date sorry i change it to 24 hours it means a day if i change it to um d means day if i change it to m m stands for months why is that Let's say now, so let me say D, right? So let's say 24 hours. This is the same thing as one day, right? If I run this, I run this. You notice now all the hours now are zero because why? I don't have any reference for hour. The frequency is no longer in 
hours anymore now it's now in days so all hours will be zero so i can just comment this out because i don't need this anymore So I'll open my Power BI next. That's the next thing I'm gonna do. Click on my transform data. So from transform data, if you notice now, if I click on this transform tab over here, you can see there's a place here, right? I have my Python script and R script. That means I can write basically write Python codes inside of my Power Query, so I can do my data transformation using Python. So if you're very good with writing Python code. Data cleaning or EDA, you can always write it in Power BI. That's Power Query. So what I need to first do, I need to enter data. So I'll click on Enter Data. This will pop up, right? So let us name, rename it as calendar. We name it as calendar table. Calendar table, right? Okay. Okay, I have this right. So before you do this, there's something you have to first notice. So I'll go to my file. I'll go to my options, I'll go to my options, that's options and settings options. So you have to go to your Python script and this part is very important. These two parts here are very, very important. These two parts here are very important. You can see what I have here, right? I have my order that is asking me, okay, detected Python from directory. So I, I'm using order and I wrote the Python directory. So the issue you may have, if you are trying to do this for the first time and you have Anaconda already installed in you, in your system, it might cause a conflict when writing Python scripts in Power Query. So what I did, I have to change this to others, right? And I have to go to the directory which I created. So before you do this, before before I, I was able to do this, I had lots of issues doing this. So I, I was lucky enough when I saw something online that actually helped me. So there was this blog post by Tommy Rantar. So it was explaining how you can write Python scripts inside of Power Query. So the first thing, I, the mistake I made was that I didn't create a virtual environment. So that's why I was always having issues when trying to run my Python scripts in my Power I had then was either I should uninstall my Anaconda or that's the only option I had then was to either uninstall my Anaconda, right? But so I, when I was going online, I asked, so I saw this article, okay, he said it was how to create a virtual environment. So when I created my, created my virtual environment, I should not install some necessary libraries. So let me show what I mean by that, right? If I go back to my if I go back to my Power BI, I'm over here, right? Let me copy this directory. So you see what I'm saying, talking about? This entire directory, I'll copy everything. Right? Copy this. I'll open my CMD. Right? CD. Change directory paste. So if I type Python, right? This is Python script came out. That means I've actually created a, I've created a, a virtual environment inside of that directory now it's not all the necessary library so it's going to be very easy for me to learn to work with my python in my power bi so i can close this right about showing that so that might be an issue when i do it for the first time so if you're having that issue just follow that blog i'll put the blog post when i'm uploading the video so i've done this right so i also need to go to my transform python script right i can clear this i don't need all of this just so I'll go back to my Jupyter Notebook and I'll copy all the codes, right? Copy all of these. Paste. Copy all of these also. And I'll paste. Paste down here and I click on OK. See? It's going to start transforming for me. Okay, well now, so it's up, right? So this my this my date table here, right? So I just I just need to click on this table to expand it better for me. I'm going to expand for me. Voila, you can see how easy this is, right? So I can change this here to let's say decoration date and time. I change to only dates. Um, I can replace current or I can add a new step. Let me add a new step. So adding a new step means I've added a new step down here. I've added a new step down here for me. And that's all. That's all. That's all. I hope you guys learned a lot. This video is brought to you by your business. Bye and have fun, guys.